Hey guys, Chelsea Phillips here. Welcome to my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. This is actually one of the earliest shopping videos I've ever done. You know, the earliest in the morning. It's 10.30 in the morning. Never done one of these this early. Usually do these like the late afternoon, like 5, 6 at night. But, you know, I just want to do it early today for a change. Um, you know, one of the main things that came out today that I doubt is going to be anywhere is, um, you know, Orgasmo, the Matt Stone and Trey Parker movie that came out to Blu-ray today. I have a feeling that's going to be one of those ones you have to get off of Amazon. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to have a bunch of DVD and Blu-ray reviews. You know, at the end of this, some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews, some stuff I checked out over the last week or so. Also, still going to have the new update, you know, DVD update up this Saturday as well. Got a whole bunch of Scream Factory titles and some really cool stuff in that. Stuff from Severin and a bunch of different stuff. Uh, so anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. Now, I can't tell if it backfired on me because I don't see any new releases. All I see is Fifty Shades of Grey, which came out on Friday. But it may have backfired coming here early because I don't see anything else new out yet. Yeah, so I can't tell if me coming here so early at like, you know, 10, 45, 11 now, if that, you know, caused them to not put anything new out yet or there was nothing of noteworthy that they bothered putting out today. I don't know. Into Ross Dress for Less we go. Now I know you're wondering why in the world am I going into Ross Dress for Less? Well, I remember years back I went in there and they had DVDs. You know, it was probably like three or four years ago. Let's see if they still do. I haven't been in this place in years, so we'll see. Well, that was a failure. I didn't see any in there. And that flooring, take a look at this flooring, was very strange. It had this weird consistency like it was all this weird sand in the flooring when you went in there. It's very odd. Into Walmart we go. Well, I see down here the one that came out today, Wet Hot American Summer, but they definitely don't have Orgasmo. I cannot see Walmart carrying that. I know that Still Alice came out today. And that was a good movie, but this was just a really, really sad movie. Not a kind of movie that I would watch again, but it was really... I, I liked it a lot, though. I don't know if, what else was today. No, you know Mordecai was today. And that was pretty funny. And Cobbler, I actually really like Cobbler. It got really, really mixed reviews. But I really like that. And I know the other one that came out today was Black Hat. I'll have a review of this in the next update. Still have to watch this one, though. But heard mixed things on that one. But like I said, I'll let you know on this one. Yeah, here's the front part. Yeah, so these are the main things. The Cobbler and Mordecai and Black Hat were the, the, you know, this week's big releases. Like I said, this came out on Friday. And I like this one. Might at some point, if I can get this cheaper, get this. But not going to rush out for because it's $25. Into Submarina, we go. Hi, can I just get a side order of the vegetables and a bottled water, please? Then make sure I do you like the medium side or the large side? I'm just the small size one. Okay. So I ended up getting the oven roasted chicken sub uh, from Submarina and then some mixed vegetables from um, Panda Express. Submarini! It's not hairs, it's sprouts. Carity. Into the Goodwill, I go. Let's see if there's anything different in here. There's usually a lot of the same stuff in here. Jerry and the pacemakers. I don't know what that is. A lot of the same stuff you see in here a lot. Fire. Now you see me. You know, nothing. Nothing that different. And this location never has a whole ton of different stuff. Some of them have a huge movie section. This one's just sort of whatever. Into Best Buy we go. Yeah, like I saw, like the main thing is Mordecai, and that's really cheap. That's only twelve twenty-nine. That's you know, it's not a great movie. It's okay. But the cobbler though for twelve uh you know, 99 on Blu-ray is a really good price. It's funny, there's a lot of stuff that's a lot cheaper now, I'm noticing. Like, tra you know, Tracers is only $13.99. It seems like the prices on some stuff are like, starting to go down a little bit. But it's weird, like, those things are that price, but then, like, Still Alice is, you know, $22.99. Uh, you know, Fifty Shades of Grey here is, you know, $19.99, which is a little less than the other place. But I feel like this is one of those ones down the line you'll be able to get for, like, 10 bucks, and I'll probably get it then. And this other one came out today, The Drownsman. I did not love this movie. It was okay, but I liked the other movie that the main actress was in, Anti-Social, a lot better. 
So that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Didn't find much of anything today. Didn't find that Orgasmo Blu-ray anywhere. Went to Fry's, but didn't show anything. They were playing like the hits of the day tomorrow and yesterday. It's real loud, so but there was nothing in there. But anyway, though, guys, thanks again for watching, for subscribing, and stay tuned now for some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. Well, the first one I got from Paramount is, uh, this is our Spike TV show. This is Bar Rescue, The Toughest Rescues. This is basically a show about this guy who's an expert at fixing up bars that are failing. He goes to the bars and puts in hidden cameras and things like that, does, like, stakeouts and things like that to see if there's weird employees there, if money's being stolen, and tries to fix up these really kind of crappy bars that are in terrible shape and things are not perfect and business is not going well and it's basically him looking at the footage showing it to the owners and things like that and then trying to figure out what they can do to fix the bar up to try and bring business back into it I always like these kind of shows they're kind of like just a chill out kind of fun watch uh, the next one from Ark Entertainment is See You in Van Valola. I think Valola, you say I think that's how you say it. It's a Sarah Highland film. This is basically about this family that ends up getting back together because, you know, Sarah Highland's brother ends up, you know, something happens to him, he ends up dying. And it's kind of about he's had a lot of problems in his life and a lot of different kinds of issues. You know, the family gets back together, you know, her brothers, the brother's boyfriend, and then it's kind of like they all get together and they haven't seen each other in a long time. And it's kind of like, there's been other kind of movies like this when they, you know, the family gets together and they kind of have like fights with each other. They don't always get along perfectly. They have some kind of problems going on. And that's essentially what it is. And it's also essentially, you know, looking at the life of the, you know, the brother who died and dealing with that because it's got all in the media because there's a whole lot of things around it. I like this. I'm always a fan of Sarah Hyland. But if you're into like, you know, family kind of drama, things about families getting together and trying to fix out their problems and things like that, check this out. Uh, the next one is from Disney. This only got released on DVD for some reason. It's Strange Magic. You know, it's uh, George Lucas produced this film. Very, very well animated movie. I feel like the movie kind of got... It just kind of came and went. I don't think a lot of people saw this movie. It's basically, though, about... Um, kind of has like one of those vibes of one of those 80s movies. Like, kind of like... The, the the fairies and the gnomes and those kind of things. And it's about like these two sides and one side is kind of like the fairy side and one side is the dark side. And the one main character ends up stumbling into the dark side area where they're not supposed to go into. When that happens, all these kind of problems happen. The, the leader of the dark side ends up trying to come over there and all these issues come along and the one, you know, head fairy, it's the princess, you know, she, the father wants her to, you know, get married so there's a prince with her and you know, and that's pretty much what it is. And she wants her to get married. She doesn't want to because the one guy broke her heart. And, and it's kind of like all based around all this musical. And it's kind of... The one thing, though, I, I didn't feel like the music was that great. It was kind of like using current songs and stuff. Not like real original songs. There's a couple of that. But some of the songs and stuff like that, I didn't feel like they were just like put together that perfectly. That that That's the thing I didn't like love about it. But it has on here outtakes on here, like, you know, comedic outtakes. Uh, the next one from Lionsgate is Cymberline. Cymberline. This is based on a, um, you know, uh, William Shakespeare play, and I feel like this is this is one that oh, I was reading into this. It isn't a, like a really known one, um, you know, like you know Romeo and Juliet and things like that. It has a really good cast in this. You know, Ethan Hawke, Ed Harris, Mila Jovovich, John Leguizamo, Dakota Johnson. You know, who's Fifty, Fifty Shades of Grey, but. The movie is, like, set in modern time, but all the language and dialogue is, like, the old-time, like, Shakespearean, like, thou far you have taken this family to the covenant of the... But to me, I was having a really tough time understanding it and figuring out what they were saying. Like, to me, it was almost like listening to another language or something that I didn't know anything about or had ever heard in my life. And it was really hard to try and figure out what was going on because it was confusing me so bad. And it was also, like... Some of the actors I could tell were having a hell of a time with trying to bring it so it seemed believable. You know, Ed, um, Ethan Hawke and Ed Harris were really good in it, but to some of the other people, you could tell it wasn't something that was easy for them to deal with. Um, to try and explain this movie, I can't. I, 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 you know, I watched the whole thing. It's about like this family, and then the one wants to get with the gr the one girl, but the father doesn't like that. And it's about the families with each other, and they're calling each other knights and oh, and which is I don't know. It's so it was so confusing and hard for me to explain that I just had a hell of a time trying to figure out what was going on with it. Uh, the next one from Olive Films is um, Extremities, the Farrah Fawcett film. This one I really love. This was really cool. It has a really great opening song. Like the song in this movie, that's you know the opening theme to this when the guy's riding the motorcycle is amazing. 
This is though basically about Farrah Fawcett, whose character is you know out one night she's getting ice cream and when she you know the place is closed and there's this guy who's like you know lurking around ends up getting in the car holding her hostage saying that you know you drive to where I say. Of course though things go bad and she ends up escaping from the guy and the guy ended up having her wallet you know her purse and everything tracks him down to the house. You know there's, the police can't do anything because they don't know who he is. They can't figure anything out. They say it's going to be his word against hers and all this kind of stuff and the guy ends up coming back to the house and it's what she does you know it's kind of you know trying to take revenge and then the people who live there with her come back and see this guy tied up and it's kind of about the decisions they make because she wants him dead and it's kind of about what happens and things like that i like this one really good transfer in this really good performance from farrah falls the next one from olive films as well as it the terror from beyond space this movie is kind of like one of the first like alien kind of in space movies it's about this expedition that goes to mars and the guy up there is like you know, calls back and says, like, everyone else is dead here, and there's a, you know, a, you know, a ship going there to get the guy back, to basically take him to jail, because they think that he killed all the people there. Of course, when they get the guy and take him back, they find out that this alien on the ship, you know, has gotten on there, and then starts going after the people on there. It's like I said, it's kind of like the first, like, alien kind of movie, like, almost like the kind of movie that would have inspired aliens, you know, the first alien. It was pretty cool, like, you know, it's one of those movies that's, like, kind of like a mystery science theater kind of thing, because, like, you you can see like sort of like cheesy old school effects and like the costumes are sort of cheesy but it's kind of like a fun one though the next one from Anchor Bay is um, Love Sick, you know, with Matt LeBlanc and uh, Chevy Chase and Ally Lauder. And it's basically uh, Matt LeBlanc's character. And he's basically has no luck with relationships. Well, he, ha you know, he's having all these different relationships, but he kind of, you know, it's his friend telling the story and saying how, you know, his friend, he didn't realize is basically a nut. And every time he gets in relationships, he goes like certifiably insane. And it's pretty much about him becoming obsessed with Ally Lauder's character and kind of like, bothering her all the time and his total obsession with her and that's pretty much what it is Chevy Chase is in the movie though as like the neighbor that's always coming by and he's like always watching porn on the guy's TV and things like that it's kind of funny nothing like absolutely amazing or anything like that uh the next one from uh Hanover House is Gabrielle and this has um you know, uh, Michael Madison in this. And this is another one that was a little kind of confusing, some of it. But it's like Michael Madison is this writer, and they use footage of him signing these autographs. And I feel like might have been real footage of Michael Madison at the convention signing a book or something, because it sort of seemed like it was older or something like that. But it was him, you know, he goes to this cab, this, you know, out, this area out by the lake, because he wants to write his new book. He needs to get inspiration, things like that. And he comes across these pictures of this girl, and then he kind of starts inventing in his head how he thinks, what he thinks happened to this girl and the family and these kind of crazy things so it's one of those kind of things too where they had Michael Madison for a little bit and then they had this other movie that they cut with it and like the Michael Madison stuff was kind of cool but some of the other stuff they were cutting to was kind of filmed odd and they were like they shot it in like you could tell like HD but then they were like zooming into the same shot and that was kind of odd because it was like the definition was going down so bad when they were doing that and some of the things that's kind of what it is though is like this dad who's crazy in this book that he's writing uh, the next one from um, uh, from Alchemy is My Dad's a Soccer Mom. This is kind of a fun movie. Um, the guy in this is like was a real life football player, and you know he was in like Norbit and a number of different movies. But it's this guy who ends up, you know, playing. He actually is playing a football player who ends up getting, you know, fired from the team, you know, because he's kind of the way he acts and things like that. People don't really like him too much. He ends up getting fired, and you know his wife ends up going back to work because he has doesn't have a job. He doesn't know what he's going to do. So he basically ends up being the soccer mom kind of guy. So he's like taking the daughter to, to soccer and taking her to school and helping her with you know homework and all that kind of stuff and that's pretty much what it is is him doing the stuff that, that his the mom was doing and it's, it's kind of funny it's sort of like a silly kind of thing i was kind of thinking it was going to have more of a vibe like ladybugs or something like that uh, the next one from Brain Damage is a joe hollow film blood story he directed the family as well this stars Mindy robinson this is pretty much about this was kind of odd to explain though it's like the Mindy Robinson's character goes to this party where all these people are about like drinking blood and eating flesh to try and stay young and things like that but when they get there you know she ends up meeting this guy that she likes but then there's like all these kind of odd things happening and these kind of weird sequences with really drawn out long dialogue scenes I didn't love it very much I mean it has some cool people in this that I like um, you know Linnea Quigley's in this and everything like that but Camden toy I just couldn't get into what was going on with this I just did it, it wasn't 
that interesting, the whole concept of it. Uh, the next one from E1 is The Secret of the Haunted Castle. You know, this is like the three investigators. And this was actually made years ago, and they've actually made another one before this as well. But I think it came out, like, finally here now. But it was that made in, like, 2009 or something. This is about these group of these kids, though, who are, like, these investigators. And like I said, I haven't seen the first one. The kid, though, has been in a bunch of stuff. He was in, like, Click, and he's in a bunch of stuff now. But like I said, I was watching this going, is that the kid from Click? And it's like, oh, this was filmed years ago. But they go to this kind of haunted castle to try and investigate something about because they found this one found this tape about his parents saying go to this thing and they go there and there's kind of creepy weird things happening and this weird guy there and ghosts and things like that it's kind of fun like kind of kind of reminds me like of like an agent cody banks and make mixed like with those kind of haunted house kind of kids movies uh the next one from e1 as well as the lady in black and this is um the cover makes it kind of look more like it's a haunted house kind of film but this is about this guy who ends up having these dreams about people being murdered and he's like seeing it before it's happening. It's kind of like one of those movies like premonitions and things like that and him trying to figure out what's going on and who this killer is and trying to track them down and why he's getting these disturbing visions and things like that. It was okay. Like I said, I was kind of hoping it was going to be more of like a haunted house kind of movie. Uh, the next one from Wild Eye is Zombie Exorcisms. And this is shot really well. It's... um pretty short movie it's only like 50 minutes but it's about um you know this this family together that for a funeral and they they filmed it really pretty well there's some cool sequences in this but you know then there ends up being like a zombie outbreak when there's this funeral and the characters have to end up hiding out in the basement and the zombies are all coming after them and it's kind of cool stuff in the basement some cool like catacombs and crawling around and a whole bunch of zombies coming after them and trying to survive and f figuring out how the hell they're going to get out of there i kind of like this one it has on here too a bunch of you know music videos videos on here and uh, a bonus short film and the next one um, is they will outlive us all and this is from Al from um, wild eye as well and this is a kind of a real small kind of movie like set all in an apartment building about these two roommates and it's like there's all these kind of storms going these hurricanes and you know they're kind of trying to hide out in this place and trying to survive because they know that more of these storms are going to be coming they're kind of wiping everybody out but in this building there's a couple random tenants and they kind of start dropping dead and it's kind of them trying to figure out what's going on and why these people are dying suddenly all of a sudden and realizing that it has something to do with something bad that kind of like grows inside these people and it's kind of them just sort of trying to survive because things start to happen to them and it's kind of cool like kind of creature movie i thought it was pretty good you know one and the last one from E1 is and this show is the second season. This is just about to start up. Just started watching this. It's a pretty fun show. Amy Poehler's brother stars in this. And it's Welcome to Sweden. It's about this guy who ends up, you know, moving to Sweden with his girlfriend who's Swedish, you know, because she's going to go back to, to get a job out there and live with her family. And it's kind of about the culture shock of him out there and not knowing the language at all and not knowing the food. And, and it's just kind of about him trying to survive there and figuring out what he's going to do with himself, why he's living there. And, and just kind of adjusting to his new life. And it's a pretty fun show. It's definitely one I'm going to want to continue to watch. Um, and I don't know what channel this played on, though. But it's not a bad show at all. It's Welcome to Sweden. This is the first season of that. Anyway, old guys, thanks for watching the shopping video and then this part of the reviews. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.